I am left in the Yumgan, amidst the mountains, not out of helplessness, nor out of desperation. In the middle of the 11th century, the Persian poet philosopher and Ismaili Muslim Dai, Nasir Khusro, sought refuge in what he called this narrow valley of mountains and piles of dust. Nasser Khusro spoke of a faith deep in people's hearts, a faith whose glorious heritage of learning, of science, of art and of architecture was reflected in the magnificent cities of Samarkand, Bukhara and Khiva. Over the centuries, a succession of empires culminated in Russian dominance across Central Asia's steppes and mountains. The Russian Revolution of 1917 brought forth an ideology that smothered all visible sign of the faith of which Nasser Khusro taught, or so it seemed. In the twilight years of the 20th century, as the huge landmass that made up the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics fragmented itself into independent nations, the peoples of Central Asia, who included the inheritors of the tradition of faith and intellect left behind by Nasser Khusro, found themselves in the midst of dramatic and disruptive changes. For the people of Tajikistan, the independent republic which emerged at this extremity of the former Soviet Union, the civil strife which followed a painful political and economic transition was made worse by the problems of geographic isolation. What resulted, especially for the population of the country's remote hinterland of Badakhshan, was a serious humanitarian crisis which began in the winter of 1992. Fortunately, however, an emergency relief effort ensured the survival of many and began a process of positive change for the newly emerging nation. Food, fuel and other essentials travelled down a lifeline from Osh in the Kyrgyz Republic across Tajikistan's northeastern frontier. The spring of 1995 thus brought renewed hope for the beleaguered people of the region. Not just because the relief effort was being supplemented by a long-term development program, but also because for the inheritors of the tradition of Nasser Khusro, the Ismaili Muslim Jamaat of Central Asia, it would bring the first formal encounter in their recorded history with their Imam Zaman. What, after a thousand years, could prevent this encounter? The inhospitable terrain, the unpredictable weather, the formidable task and its imponderable scale. In the face of extraordinary logistical challenges, volunteers mobilized from Jamaats across the globe under the leadership of the Council for the United Kingdom and joined their Central Asian sisters and brothers with characteristic dedication, courage, zeal and efficiency.
After the meeting in Dushanbe, Molana Hazar Imam and President Imam Ali Rahmanov formalized the relationship forged between Tajikistan and the Aga Khan Development Network since 1992 in an agreement for cooperation and development. The agreement enables more effective use of the network's resources in the country. It is similar to the accords and protocols that the network has concluded with several countries in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. Later that evening, Hazar Imam, speaking at a dinner given in his honor in Dushanbe, described what the agreement stood for. We have a shared recognition that peace is essential, indeed is a precondition for any improvement in the quality of life of the people of Tajikistan. We have a shared recognition of the need to harness new human and material resources in a resource-poor world to the future of Tajikistan. And that harnessing is another precondition for progress. We have a shared recognition that our increasingly free market world is propelling countries, societies, and institutions to merit-based competition. And that competence in, our, in all our undertakings is yet another precondition for development. We have a shared recognition that with the differences in peoples, languages, and faith, that history has bequeathed Tajikistan and most other countries of our globe. Building on pluralism, as affirmed in your new constitution, is one more precondition for progress. Thousands of Murids gathered at Dushanbe Stadium for Molana Hazri Mam's first mulakat in Tajikistan. In his Irshad Mubarak, Molana Hazrimam touched on concerns close to the hearts of his murids and on events deeply imprinted in their memories and in those of our brother and sister Muslims who had gathered together for the occasion. My beloved spiritual children and my brothers and sisters in Islam, this is an historic occasion and I will always value it because it is my first visit to Tajikistan. 
Other reasons also make it historic. It is without doubt one of the most delicate times in Tajikistan's history. In the first place, this country, like others, which for many decades was part of the Soviet Union, now must establish itself and seek its way forward as a fully independent country, part of the world's community of nations. And this must be achieved in a fundamentally changing world environment where forces such as the market economy need to be tamed and made to serve the people of Tajikistan. Secondly, there is urgent need to bring peace back to Tajikistan so that all can live without fear in a civil society and hopefully will participate in creating a strong national consensus towards modern principles of statehood, including the integrity of the state, multi-party democracy, a free market economy, and equal rights and privileges for all under the Constitution, no matter what the ethnic, linguistic, or religious background of the individual. And thirdly, Tajikistan as a country with a substantial majority of Muslims will need to find its way, as do other countries within the Ummah, to live within the ethics of our faith while contributing to the enhancement of society in addressing the problems of our modern world. I hope and count on the government of Tajikistan and all na other national and international agencies and organizations that have Tajikistan's interest at heart to join us in our endeavors for the future, keeping in mind that in order for countries, institutions, organizations, and programs to be effective, they will need to be increasingly competent in whatever they are doing. For today, and even more so for our generations to come, we will be living in an increasingly meritocratic world. No time can be lost in the interest of all Tajiks in giving up those actions which without any doubt will damage the future of Tajikistan if they are allowed to be continued, such as killing to resolve differences or evil social habits such as growing, distributing, trading or consuming drugs or acquiescing that these things be done. Such actions or habits can only result in prolonged damage to Tajik society. And it is my deepest hope and prayer that your faith, your intellect, your wisdom, and your pragmatism will bring you together, forgiving if not forgetting, the pain and the differences of the past to a consensus on the principles on which the progress of Tajikistan should be predicated in the years ahead. Be assured that my prayers will accompany you every day as you move down this road. And wherever I can, whenever I can, the human and material resources of the Imamat will be there to assist you, if you so wish, in achieving your goals. To all my spiritual children who are here today, and to your families, wherever they may be, I give my most affectionate loving blessings. And to my brothers and sisters in Islam, be assured that my deep and heartfelt prayers are with you for your peace, your unity, and for your happiness. I also pray for the eternal peace and rest of the souls of all the deceased members of your families. Khanavada. Irshad Mubarak, Maulana Hazar Imam, Shah Karim al-Usayni, Aghafan, Tushanbe, 
24 مای سال 1995 برادران و خواهران مسلمانم اعتماد داشته باشید که دعاهای قلبی و عمیق من برای آسایش آسایش تگی شما برای متحدی شما برای خوشبختی شما همراه شماست من این چونین برای آرامش روحی ابدی ارواح های گذشته خانواده های شما دعا می کنم خانه تان آباد باشد From Dushanbe, Hazrimam, accompanied by President Rachmanov, flew to Tajikistan's easternmost province of Gono Badakhshan. It is here that the Aga Khan Development Network commenced its first initiatives in Tajikistan. Nestled amongst the Pamir Mountains, known also as the Roof of the World, Korog, the provincial capital, was the scene of an exceptionally moving welcome. Honoring the traditional Central Asian ceremony of greeting, Hazar Imam accepted a morsel of bread which he dipped in salt in symbolic recognition of the two essentials of life, that which is of most value. Korog citizens lined the streets and thronged the airport to witness the Imam's arrival. Undeterred by distance, young and old alike had walked the city's length and breadth to celebrate this event. Shortly after his arrival, Molana Hazar Imam addressed civic leaders and explained why the network had focused its initial efforts in Badakhshan. Not just because of the large number of Ismailis who live here, 
but more broadly because of the example that Gona Badakshan represents. Populations who must find their way in rapidly changing circumstances. After years of intellectual and to some degree physical isolation, the challenge to meet change is stern. It is a time when experimentation with new approaches is not just possible, but necessary. It is a time of new possibilities, but also of new stresses. The unity of the great majority of the people of Dona Badakshan may paradoxically present the most profound challenge. Like many new political units around the world, Dona Badakshan is too small to be economically self-sufficient. The viability of Dona Badakshan depends on the development of regional linkages that would open markets, facilitate the creation of commercial and social service systems, allow advantage to be taken of complementarities of resources among neighbors, and expand the range of opportunities for using, for example, the impressive human resources of the autonomous oblast. If Golna Balakshan and its neighbors look only inward, the possibilities for future development are severely constrained. If they look outward, much more is possible. We see around the world far too many examples of regions where the rule of law has collapsed, where parochial interests have been allowed to undercut a broader conception of human cooperation. The former Yugoslavia is a horrific illustration of this short-sightedness. The Caucasus is another. Rwanda and Burundi a third. There may have been a time when human beings could find, could not find ways to settle their differences without resort to killing. But human society has developed the ability to move beyond that primitive state. We cannot stand by without comment when it slips back into chaos. Essential to the creation of a higher order of human relationships is the acceptance of pluralism. Within the Muslim world, for example, thoughtful and heartfelt differences exist in regard to the interpretation of the faith. Nothing is gained by imposing one interpretation on people disposed to another. Indeed, the effect of such coercion is a denial of the principles of the faith. Religious plurality in the Ummah is a tribute to the rich, richness of the faith and a source of its strength. Shia and Sunni can exist and cooperate, true to their own interpretations of Islam, but confederates in the faith. Similarly, people of particular ethnic, cultural, or political groups must grow beyond narrow conceptions of clan rivalry to an acceptance of differences. Human genius is found in its variety, which is a work of Allah. I share with you these ideas, not out of a sense that they are appropriate only for Gonga Badakshan and Tajikistan. Indeed, if they had such narrow applicability, I should be inclined to be mute at this point waiting until after I had had the chance to see more of Gona Badakshan and its people before offering counsel. But these ideas of the importance of pluralism, of striving for peace, of building civil society, are not limited in time and space. They have had applicability in every country in which I have worked since assuming the Imamate in 1957 countries that have emerged from colonial rule to assume their independence, countries that did not exist at all in 1957, as well as countries with more con continuity of constitutional form.
Later that evening, Ali Mamad Niyoz Mamadov, the chairman of the region of Gona Badakhshan, greeted Hazri Imam with moving and poetic words of welcome. Our hearts are full of happiness, and time after time we question us, isn't it a dream? Vamoro boya durust pami, zero kablan chudin odisaro echkas baroy khud tasavuram kardana metonis. But I'm sure that you understand us and our feelings. The thing is that no one here in Badakhshan could believe that such things could happen. Waman azami mardumi Badakhshan ba zaban shir meguyam. Omadi zud marav az dari koshone iman. Nafasi is ki dizar tora bazmanam. Mashikan kosei la briz va fadari umer. Bishkanam tazru harfi ushat armana. And as the poet put uh, of poet says, you came, don't go so soon. Not enough breath to fool our wish to see you. And uh, I did not translate the two other verses, but it's also uh, asking you to come again and again. support is to change a time of pain and sadness into hope for the future. In the winter of 1992, AKF formed the Pamir Relief and Development Program, Tajikistan's first indigenous non-governmental organization. Since then, with the support of government agencies of several Western countries, PRDP has distributed food, fuel and clothing throughout the region. But food deliveries cannot continue indefinitely. Ultimate self-sufficiency is essential.
agriculture needs reform. PRDP launched an initiative that at the time of Hazar Imam's visit covered 15% of the land, most of it being planted for the first time. But without fuel, tractors were useless. People were forced to relearn old skills and traditional methods of farming. PRDP has been enabling the transition from collective farms, known as sovkhoz, to privatized farming. Change has come remarkably fast. Already by the time of Hazar Imam's visit, wheat yields were markedly higher than they had been under the Soviet system. Potato yields had nearly doubled. PRDP had introduced a type of high yield seed developed specifically for the high mountain environment. Another PRDP project, and one that Molana Hazrimam visited whilst in Badakhshan, was the Pamir 1 hydroelectric power plant. Here, in partnership with the US government, AKF has assisted in ensuring completion of the first phase. A project to complete a further phase is now underway. Upon completion, Pamir 1 will not only help meet domestic and future commercial and industrial needs, it will also help reverse the environmental degradation that has resulted from the felling of trees for fuel during energy crisis. Whilst Hazrimam continued his official and institutional engagements, the Jamaat proceeded with preparations for their historic mulakat. walked mile upon mile across mountains throughout the night in rain and icy cold, spending the remaining hours huddled together under blankets and rugs. As the morning mist rose and hours turned to minutes, the assembled Jamaat at Porshnev on the outskirts of Khorov sat with the patience of a thousand years 
since Nasir Khusro first set foot in Badakhshan, awaiting their Imam in contemplative anticipation. Wisdom accompanied wonderment as Khalifas, the Jamaat's religious functionaries, together with the senior most among them, the Shah Kalan, waited to receive Molana Hazrimam. <laughs> Here, as in Ishkashim a few days later, Morana Hazrimam's Ishad was heard by members of the Jamaat gathered together across a narrow stretch of river on the northern border of Afghanistan. My beloved children and my brothers and sisters in Islam, today is a day of special happiness for me. As this is not only my first visit to Badakhshan, but it is also the first time in many centuries that the Imam of the time of the Ismail Muslim has had the opportunity to see and to be in the presence of members of the Ismail Jawab in Badakhshan and amongst other brothers and sisters of Muslims. Let me repeat. This is a day of very special values. 
I am aware of all the time and effort and voluntary service which innumerable people in government, in government service, and individuals from all walks of life have offered to make my visit in this gathering possible. And I express to all of them my warm and deep gratitude and my admiration for this collective effort. Today, Uma is constituted by hundreds of millions of people who are Muslim and who are bound to their faith by the Shahada, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. And yet, over the centuries of our history, have come to live in different climates, speak different languages, live in different political contexts, and who differentiate in some interpretations of their faith. Within the Ummah, the Ismaili community reflects much of the same pluralism. And I want to take this occasion, therefore, to say that whereas some might be convinced that plurality within the Islamic world is undesirable or is in some way a weakness, I would like to share with you today my conviction, my very deep conviction, that the plurality of the peoples of the Muslim world is not just an irreversible historical fact, but it is a strength for which we must be grateful, a strength that should be constructively harnessed to the building of this and other nations within the ethics of Islam. The Holy Quran says, O mankind, lo, we have created you male and female, and have made you nations and tribes, that ye may know one another. Lo, the noblest of you in the sight of Allah is the best in conduct. Lo, Allah is knower, aware. Nearly 40 years have passed since I succeeded my late grandfather to the hereditary imams of the Ismaili Muslims. And during these four decades, much has been achieved, significant institutions have been created, and meaningful programs have been implemented. While it is clear that every country and every institution has its human and material limitations, as do those entities and programs under my leadership, it is also true that I wish them to serve the Jamaat in Tajikistan and those amongst whom the Jamaat lives as vigorously, as generously, as confidently, and as effectively as possible. It will be our endeavor to serve the Ismaili Jamaat in Tajikistan as well as our brothers and sisters in Islam to overcome the problems which you face today and inshallah to set Tajik society as quickly as possible onto a stable and vigorous course of peace and well-being. To all my spiritual children who are here today, and to all your families, wherever they may be, and some are outside the Tajikistan, I give my most affectionate loving blessings, and to my brothers and sisters in Islam here and in those areas of Badakhshan, which I will not be visiting, be assured that my deep and heartfelt prayers are with you for your peace, your unity, and your happiness. I pray also for the eternal peace and rest of the souls of all the deceased members of your families. به امت اسلام می نگرم به این خلاصه می آیم که اگر هر کدام 
و یا همه این مردمان بخواهند زندگی بهتری برای خودشان در ما مسلمان هستیم باید اختلافات را با صلحی که اخلاق مذهبمون ترقیب می کند جایگزین کنیم اخت... ما مسلمان هستیم باید اختلافات را با صلحی the Jamaat presented Hazri Imam with gifts symbolic of their endeavor to keep the faith alive over the centuries. The Rubab, a string instrument which accompanied recitals of devotional poetry known as Maddo. Manuscripts, including Nasser Khusro's Wajhedin, which taught that the faith called for an intellectual search. To all my beloved spiritual children, and to my Muslim brothers and sisters, at the end of this Mulakat, I convey to you my prayers for Mr. for peace, for the resolution of your worldly problems, for strength in the practice of your faith, and for unity amongst all of you. And though I will be leaving you physically in some days, remember that at all times, از طریق تحمل از طریق سخاوت از طریق بخشندگی اللهم صل محمد Within hours of this first mulakat, in the shadow of the mountains which sheltered Nasser Khusro, occurred another moving encounter, revealing yet again the depth of attachment between the traditions of Badakhshan and the guidance of the Imam-e-Zaman. 